a certain number of residents of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, part of which is controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, want to move to Ukraine. This was reported on air by Alexei Dmitrashkovsky, a representative of the Ukrainian military commandment's office in the Kursk region on Apostrophe TV. He says that locals treat Ukrainian servicemen very well. Dmitrashkovsky says that in some cases, people claim that the Ukrainian armed forces treat them better than the Russian authorities and they are offended by the Kursk region leadership, which abandoned them and does not take any part in their lives. A fairly large number of people are already saying out loud that they want to leave for Ukraine, that they don't trust their government. According to Dmitrashkovsky, representatives of the Ukrainian Defense Forces are currently helping residents of the Kursk region with food, firewood, medicine and warm clothes. They are also showing videos with news informing about what is happening in Ukraine, the Russian Federation and in the world in general. We show the news. We try to inform the population about what is happening in Russia, in the world, in Ukraine. They didn't know anything at all, the soldier said. According to him, the only thing that the residents of Kursk region heard about Ukrainians was that Russian propagandists said, Ukrainians are fascists who kill their children, destroy their cities and abuse their residents. Even one woman said that when Ukrainian soldiers entered the village, they hid in the bushes so as not to be seen by the soldiers because they were scared that they were animals. Today, they tell these stories with a smile on their faces and trust the Ukrainian soldiers at least they are waiting for our arrival, says Dmitrashkovsky. He added that in the part of Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces are located, there are mainly elderly people who suffer from various diseases and there are also small children. In addition, Dmitrashkovsky said that the Russian army is launching attacks on the Kursk region as a result of which 24 Russian citizens have already died and more than 30 have been injured. The Russians understand very well who is shooting at them, the military man said. According to him, the Russian military is also striking infrastructure facilities, water towers, electrical substations, etc. Russian military man Yegor Guzenko, who runs the Z-Blog 13th, again criticized the Putin regime. He accused the authorities of paying miserable salaries to air defense forces, border guards and marines on gas rigs in the Black Sea. Guzenko stated that the Russian authorities treat their own soldiers as best they can. Vladimir Vladimirovich, pay attention to this unfair situation. On the Krim 2 platform, there are marines, related units, pilots. Not only are they performing incomprehensible tasks of guarding Gazprom's scrap metal, they are suffering terrible losses. And at the same time, they are not paid the salaries of the SVO participants. What kind of pig policy is this? Where is the justice? And at the same time, state Duma deputies receive such salaries that they are mother-in-law. They do not know what yacht to buy, the Russian military man said. He also complained that the Kremlin had made soldiers recruited in the first wave of mobilization into serfs. They are being forced to fight to the end of the so-called SVO, which is not expected in the near future. Earlier, Z Occupier 13th is threatening Putin with an uprising. 13th was especially outraged by the situation in the Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces took Russian troops into operational encirclement. In the fighting in this area, the Z-blogger lost a close friend, captain of the Russian armed forces, Artem Matul. Here in the Kursk region in Sudza, the bridges of the Ukrainian armed forces were destroyed all around, and ours were building pontoon bridges. Tima died, Artem Vladimirovich, Matul, a captain. And if we had destroyed all the bridges to the Ukrainians at the very beginning, there would have been no weapon supplies there. Everything ended there a long time ago but we do everything the other way around. How wrong? It's a shame to the depths of our souls. We once believed in all this and went to war, and we honestly fought for all this. And the Russian authorities were having fun at this time, organizing seminars and negotiations. What is happening now is all betrayal. Traitors are sitting in the Kremlin. Planes are crashing. Explosions are happening. Inconvenient people are being removed, are being put in prisons. We must understand that when we return from the front, the war will not be over for us. Traitors have captured the country. There are many of us. We are a whole country. 
and there is a bunch of you sitting there. You are old. You will soon die, Guzenko said. Russian forces with improved tactics and superior firepower have been seizing territory in the Donetsk region in recent months, with a speed and aggression not seen since the full-scale invasion in 2022, the Washington Post writes. As the publication writes last year, the battle was dominated by artillery duels and so-called meat attacks by large groups of poorly trained Russian conscripts. But now, Ukrainian fighters report that enemy assault units are often well-trained and well-equipped and move in smaller groups. On some parts of the front, Russian troops stormed defenses in groups of 10 to 20 soldiers a few months ago, but now use teams of just four. This practice helps Russian troops avoid surveillance and their dispersal makes them difficult to target with drones and artillery. The Ukrainians also used the tactics last fall. But now, soldiers say the key difference is that Russia has combined the concept with advantages in ammunition and tolerance for casualties. New communications equipment has also helped Russian commanders better organize attacks, soldiers say, and has increased the effectiveness of drone strikes. Yet, while enemy casualties are staggering, Ukrainian soldiers say the Russians have enough numbers to keep up the pressure. They don't spare people. The last place we worked, there's a crossroads, completely covered in bodies, and they keep coming because they have orders, say one of the fighters, Junior Lieutenant Vitali. There are already a lot of them. Everything is black with corpses. In the southern part of Donetsk Oblast, the Russians seized about 318 square miles in August and September, about 268 of which were captured along the front between Bakhmut and Ugladar, Blackbird Group analyst Parsi Paroinen noted. The biggest territorial losses occurred from mid-August and mid-September, Paroinen said, coinciding with the Ukrainian invasion of Russia's Kursk Oblast. Yet, as Rob Lee, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, notes, the most important aspect of the struggle on this section of the Donetsk front may be the loss of troops rather than territory. Both Moscow and Kiev have suffered heavy losses and the winner may be the side that can hold out longer.